Hello, Caleb here to tell you about an exciting project from our friends Yoshi from Transmissions Podcast and Greg from Unfunny Nerd Tangent, the Transformers reanimated comic series. Based on the original cartoon series, the Transformers reanimated bridges the gap between the end of the seminal second G1 Transformers season and the 1986 movie that defined the childhood of millions and continues to define and inspire millions today. Just look at us here at APDC, am I right? Authors Yoshi and Greg are releasing each issue of their comic series along with cover art by today's top Transformers artists, free of charge for your reading and nostalgic pleasure at TransformersReanimated.com. Don't have time to read? That's sad. But not a problem, for us anyway, because you can download the funny audio read-throughs of each issue. The APDC team, along with Mike Seibert over at Mike Seibert Radio, just participated in the reading of the holiday special Transformers Reanimated Issue 5, A Transformers Christmas Carol. It was a wild ride, and I guarantee it will entertain the dickens out of you. See what I did there? Anywho, check out their first five issues now, with many more to come, by visiting TransformersReanimated.com. That's TransformersReanimated.com. One more time, that's TransformersReanimated.com. Bye! All right, we're starting right now. 9 o'clock p.m. <laughs> it will definitely be close to midnight. Metatron must be stopped, no matter the cost. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Autopod Decepticast. This is your bi-weekly podcast that delivers an episode-by-episode breakdown of the original G1 series. This is our episode 116, and we're going to be covering episode 12 of the Transformers G1 series. That's the Ultimate Doom Part 2, and I'm your host, Aaron, and let me take you back a little bit to the year 1990. I was a young boy, but the age of eight. My whole extremely large family was planning to spend Christmas in Paris. That night, I accidentally ruined dinner. My older brother, Buzz, was fucking with me. He ate all the cheese pizza, and everyone was giving me shit about it, so I went upstairs, and I prayed to white Jesus for my family to disappear. Unbeknownst to me, due to a power outage that caused alarm clocks to reset, the family overslept, and there was just this mass hysteria of everybody trying to get to the airport. I was left behind on this family trip to Paris. But I didn't know that. I woke up, saw an empty house, and because I was a stupid-ass kid, I thought I made my family disappear. <laughs> so I did what you do. I jumped on beds, ran around the house, made sure to wash all my body parts with actual soap, including my belly button, which I never did before but sort of enjoyed. Hmm. I shaved. I screamed. You know, all the shenanigans. Unfortunately, I discovered my house was being cased by the wet bandits. Of course... None other than the short, gold-toothed one, Ryan, and of course the funny-looking, taller one, Caleb, and I understood right away that their intention was to break in my house and steal all my family's shit, so I hooked up all kinds of rigs and audio gags to kind of trick them into thinking that my family was home, and eventually I started to feel lonely. I talked to Santa Claus impersonator and asked him to have the real Santa help me out. I, I went to watch a church choir performance, and I even convinced my serial killer-looking-ass neighbor, old man Marley, to reconcile with his son. Here's the deal. I miss my goddamn family. Eventually, my ruse wore off. Ryan and Caleb, the moistened midnighters, they realized that I am home alone. And I, I know that they know about my situation, and I know that they're planning a, a break-in at my house on Christmas Eve of all days. So you know what I did? I set up all kinds of amazing booby traps. Pellet gun to the nuts, frozen concrete, iron to the face, the old hot knob, tar <laughs> on the stairs, nails in the feet, blowtorch head, saran wrap to the face, sharp Christmas ornaments on bare feet. We'll never forget about the micro machine slippage trick and oh, trip wires, trip wires galore. Finally... Ryan and Caleb cornered me. They were going to fucking kill my ass. But I was saved by that beautiful psychopath, my neighbor, old man Marley. Meanwhile, about the time they got to France, my mom realized they left me behind. She went through a whole trains, planes, and automobile situation to come and get me. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves and answer the question, how did I get that blowtorch? Hi, I'm Ryan. I just assume it's in the basement. Like, you know, I have a blow I have several blowtorches. I don't know if I'm the barometer of what's normal, 
but I get you a blowtorch by this afternoon, dude. All right. So blowtorches are just an easy thing to get. Caleb, what is your answer? I'm just glad to be here with you filthy animals. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was not a culinary blowtorch, though. It wasn't like a get your creme brulee all caramelized. Oh, I'm not talking no. about that either. Okay. <laughs> Actually, like a welding blowtorch. I, I can get you plenty of blowtorches. Oh, now you're getting in the game. No, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, my dad, His dad has a whole shop. Remember the, the railroad? Mm-hmm. My dad, I do have a railroad story, another railroad story. Oh, God. <laughs> Hit so, it. All right. So <clears throat> they used to have an annual... Uh, the the railroad used to have an annual picnic at um, at the Springfield Lake Park. I remember going, and so I don't know how. I never know how me and my dad get involved in any of these these conversations. But my dad told a story. He was like, he goes, we went. He goes, yeah. He's like, I went one year, and I got there, and uh, Mad Dog brought his wife. So th- th- everybody's got a, everybody's got okay, a. Okay, so already there's a dude named Mad Dog is involved. Yeah, well, he's one of the Dog Brothers. Oh God. And so there's <laughs> part mul- of the Wolf Pack. Of well, there's multiple guys at the railroad that have dog nick. There's Hot Dog, Red Dog, Mad Dog, <laughs> um, and they're not related, but they were known as the Dog Brothers because they all had dog in their nicknames, and mm-hmm. everybody had a nickname. So anyway, uh, uh, this other guy walks up and goes, "Hey." Hey, Colin, have you seen uh, have you seen Mad Dog's wife? And my dad goes, no. And and the guy goes, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have brought her. Ah! And my dad says, why? And the guy says, I I don't I don't have any I don't have the type of equipment to haul her over here. Uh, oh, that is <laughs> she that is was cruel. She was fat. No, thank you. Yes, I got it. It's, Cla- that's terrible. Classic railroad union. Oh humor. God, what a yeah. no, this is, this place is, would be my nightmare to be. But but that being said, I can get you blow torches. Uh, real quick, uh, back go to the Home Alone thing. Have you guys noticed that there's uh, um, on Netflix the movies that made us? There's a, a new series. Oh no, I haven't. Home Alone is one of them. There's four of them. I would be interested in watching that because it's I was, great. I was in, I was gonna say as a transition from this Home Alone intro. That was such a huge hit. There's not very there, – there's maybe three movies that are just so imprinted in my head from th- – because I think when I was a kid, they were just in the theater forever, and they were the biggest sm- – Home Alone as a smash hit, Terminator 2, and Jurassic Park are I just – Those are all early 90s films. In yeah. my head. Mm-hmm. Home Alone was the shit. There yeah. was nothing funnier than Home Alone. Well, Macaulay Culkin was the goddamn that, best. That Michael Jordan on the train set always cracked me up. <laughs> I don't remember that scene. He's so, a cardboard cutout. Yeah. Oh, yes. You go back that and forth in front of the window. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Like, there's a party going on. But yeah, it's great. I recommend it. Also, all the other ones are good. Like uh, There were two. Uh, they, Ghostbusters is on there, and Die Hard is on there, and then they had Dirty Dancing, which I've mm-hmm. never seen all of. And... I watched it last, and I'm like, this is actually fucking fascinating. It's not a bad And movie. I listened to the, the summation of what the story's about. I'm like, that's what that fucking movie's about? It right. centers around an abortion. Yeah. Every R.I.P. Uh, Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Oh, did he get aborted? <laughs> yeah. From can- pancreatic cancer. From life. Before we launch into this future disaster of an episode, Ryan, do we uh- want to... <laughs> what are we drinking? All right. We have the Cybertronian Chaos Book. Which is taken from the Barbados book on page 19 of Jigger Beaker and Glass, which mm. is that book that Caleb got me for my birthday way back when. I don't and know what you're talking about. Drinking around the world. You oh. haven't been here for the past 116 episodes, <laughs> so Aaron is guest hosting this one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just drinking around the world in the early 20th century. Hey, are you white? Do you have money? <laughs> are do, you you live, do you live in the 1920s? Does your dad own a silver mine? Yeah. <laughs> this is the book for you. Yeah. Um, I like how every time we bring this up, we bring up whiteness. Well, uh, it's, it's it's integral. This is the Autopod Decepticast Social Justice Hour. Yeah. It's important. All right. Um, so this is from the book. Tom Hartnett and Larry Stuckey and I had been laying naked on a sugar white beach talking about Gilbert and Sullivan and about the days we used to play baseball against each other at Yale and Trinity. And then we went into town for a quick one. All this sounds like euphemisms for we all fucked each other. Yeah, totally. They probably did. Probably. Um, So here's the recipe for the drink. Put a large lump of ice in the biggest tumbler in sight. 16 ounces is proper. One jigger, which is 1.5 ounces, of dark rum. One jigger of Bacardi. The juice of one lime. One teaspoon sugar. And then stir and fill glass with ginger beer. 
This sounds like it's going to be really good. Yeah, it does. It does sound like it's going to be good. <laughs> I love the glasses, Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, you guys, you'll see the photos. You have seen the photos. Ryan always puts these in the most appropriate glasses. Like These he, are my glasses, right? They're, they're all Iris yeah, glasses, yeah, he, always. I, I just like the way he curates his glassware with the drink. It's part of the presentation. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. It's uh, got some muley elements. Yeah. It, some ginger, ginger beer. beer. I yeah, love ginger beer. I will say almost anything is good with ginger beer. Yeah. So it t- it tastes a little like a combination between a lemon drop and a mule, or a lemon drop. And there's no lemon in here, right? Lime, lime. The juice of which one lime? lime? There's lime in a mule. Although, actually, come to think of it, now I did only have one lime, and so I was making it for three of us. I used a uh, Meyer lemon from my lemon tree that I have. Repeat those ingredients again, please. That is uh, one shot of rum, one shot, uh, one shot of dark rum, one shot of Bacardi, the juice of a one lime, a teaspoon of sugar, and then fill with ginger beer. And that is the Cybertronian Chaos book. Okay, it, it is delicious. They, it's uh, it's similar to uh, the modern drink that they call a dark and stormy. Sure, it's basically yeah, a rum, guess, yep. a rum mule, but you've got a blend of rums. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming a dark and stormy uses a dark rum. Yeah, I use Myers. Okay, I love Myers. I drink Myers on the rocks. It has a medicinal, burnt quality to it. That's why I like NyQuil. On the rocks, (laughs) it's very medicinal. (laughs) Can you imagine? I that's going to be our next drink. Awesome! (laughs) I can't wait. Well, thank you, Ryan. This is a good one. I'm not against it. When are we going to break out some absinthe? I have been looking for that because a lot of the recipes in the book call for it, and it's not the cheapest thing to get. No. And that's why uh, we need patron uh, Patreon support. <laughs> what a I guess that's a good seamless transition. You like that sec- <laughs> yeah. quick reminder to those who would like to chuck a couple lira, or since we're talking about absinthe, a couple francs into the tip jar to support what we have going on. We're on Patreon. Um, there are several tiers of support that you can choose. Each one offering the sweet reward of APDC swagger. That you're going to say release. <laughs> that too. By the way, what that's are, the that's the secret level. TFCon recording. That is true. That Patreon patrons 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 have a- accessed the first of our. I believe it will be a four part series from our TFCon, and they're going to see it in the video. Yeah. yeah, I finally video. just I finally just got the whole video edited. And I'll be releasing it. I, I, the, all the, the patrons will have it all. I, well, this is they'll have it all before this even comes out. And then we'll, in fact, the public might have it before this we'll, comes yeah, out. Yeah, we basically been <laughs> wanting to put it out to patrons, and then we'll release it to the public. But patrons will get that kind of thing sooner. Well, and then uh, we're very soon. Actually, there is some stuff we're going to be sending out pretty soon. So that is correct. We also did something kind of fun, as you might have realized. We have been shilling a little bit for our friends Greg and Yoshi on the Transformers reanimated project. And we actually just recorded an episode with them and Mike Seibert of Mm -hmm. Mike Seibert Radio. And it is their issue five of their Transformers reanimated project, a Transformers Christmas Carol. Uh, if you if you aren't aware of this project Super size issue. Yeah, yeah. If if you aren't aware of it, it is Basically, what happened between the second season of the G1 cartoon and the 1986 movie, which is placed in 2005. So you've got about a 20-year gap of time mm-hmm. where they just didn't decide to write Transformers stories right. about mm-hmm. it. And How so they're they? trying to fill <laughs> those fucking assholes, <laughs> those talentless hacks. But you know who's not untalented and not a hack? Greg and Yoshi. Right. <laughs> and so they uh, have done that, and we have lended some voice acting in right. quotes to their most recent episode as well I as highly what, episode recommend two? focusing on the speak and spell character that <laughs> i enjoyed doing myself that was awesome that's, yeah. it was a lot of fun <laughs> that's it was a great and it was uh can we can we tell them that the content of that was it was their holiday mm-hmm. double issue yeah it's a double issue holiday, it was great christmas yeah. carol issue yeah i'm assuming it'll be out before this episode oh, yeah. Yeah. as I well so if so. you haven't listened to it yet please Go to uh, transformersreanimated.com and peep the episode. If you can't get enough of our sultry, terrible accents and garbage that will spew out of our mouths, hey, there's another source for you. Yeah. Speaking of the holiday season, huh? I have a gift for you guys. Oh, you know, shit. A little surprise. He do- you really do. Oh, it's a gun. <laughs> oh, fuck. He's got, he's got gifts. Uh, I've got mine, too. I'll be right <laughs> Well, first of all, close your eyes. Okay. Right. Really close them. Open your hands. 
Oh, oh God. God. It's it's <laughs> why is it warm and yeah. hard? Why does it feel like a test? Hey, don't open your eye yet. Okay. Hang on. Now you can open your eyes. Oh, Ooh. shit. What I what you have before you are oh fuck blaster bottle openers designed and manufactured by none other than friend of the show and shockwave superfan at all are dead yeah. aka all hail Megatron. Haley, oh, that's awesome. I remember seeing pictures of these. Oh shit, that's so I have a blaster cool. bottle opener now. How did did she, did did you get in contact with her? No, or? She had them up on Etsy. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. She <laughs> sent along a little bonus gift for what? each of us. Oh, which is oh, an APDC wow. logo magnet. Oh, Holy Haley. Shit. Yeah, this is That's great, so Haley. cool. She so. is an AutoCAD master. Yeah, unlike uh, some people I know, she knows how to turn some on her 3D printer. Too. <laughs> I could turn it on. I just can't make it do anything that looks like what I want to make it do. Listen, I haven't had a lot, even a chance to. After the holiday season, I'm all over it. I figured out how to edit video. You come over and, f- and do it then. You know <laughs> no. what? It's l- way easier to edit video. These are so nice. <sighs> These are like really This is nice. so great. Thanks, yeah, Haley. I got one for myself. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Haley. Haley. I should right. plop this out. For here. that uh, APDC, that That's magnet awesome. is so cool. Yeah, that, I guess that'll be yeah. going on the free edge. And the, I, I'm looking at this, and I'm trying to deconstruct it. I assume the that blaster. you buy the ink unquote unquote and that's what and it prints filament. out in layers and that's where the texture comes from yeah you, right. it's, a, it's a big spool of it's filament a, it's, a, it's a plastic pl- plastic mm-hmm. filament that and then it melts and then you build up the layers mm-hmm. upon layers <laughs> okay well this is awesome thanks thanks Haley. thanks Haley. thanks Aaron. really nice we'll get some pictures of these up everybody you should go to her uh, Etsy page. It is H A Y L E Y C A D. So she makes a lot of uh, 3D printed emblems, weapons, accoutrements to the cosplay lifestyle. So check it out. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. That's so cool. Haley Cad. She is quite the Cad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very weird thing to say. <laughs> We were left an updated iTunes review, so you know that means it's time for a shout out. Updated iTunes? Yeah. Is it is it um, the Bears Rule? You wish. It is the <laughs> British version of the Bears Rule. So that would be like the rugby player? <laughs> no, it's our friend Robinus Prime. Oh. Robinus Prime has once again updated his review as of August 15th, 2019. Way back in episode 38, he said to us, his headline was, these custards are still going (laughs) strong. And I can't remember if we ever got to the bottom of what What custards custards meant. I don't think we did. Then in episode 57, he updated his headline to (laughs) tastypussy.com and an after dark special. That's our our guy Rodimus. (laughs) Hello, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Well, now Robinus has an all new headline, which is Transformers Inspire Psychos. (laughs) These dudes are entertaining in all the right and wrong ways. <laughs> Five awesome. stars. So keeping it simple, keeping it creepy, very on brand for our friend <laughs> Robinus Prime uh, from from uh, Great Britain. What part of Great Britain are you from, Robinus? When, uh, are we going to come to TF Nation? Yes. That would, that'd be great. And kick it Robinus style? Yes. We just need three, th- like, what, like 3,000. We just like five grand. Yeah, about we're that. Set. For like uh, uh, plane tickets and, and accommodations. Yeah. Patrons. Five five grand numbers five of grand, patrons please. at a minimum of two dollars <laughs> each is ten thousand. That's th- two trips to TF Nation. We'll do it twice in a year. Yeah, you I get, know you only got one trip. We'll just do it right. <laughs> they're, uh, they got a lot of buzz right now because they got um, Peter Cullen. Peter Cullen. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. I guess he's has he. Ne- I guess he's never done the TF Nation before. The yeah, TF Nation's creaming their pants over there. They're British pants. <laughs> <laughs> Pantaloons. They're pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beat me to it. Thank you, Robinus, for the Easter eggs that you are uh, keep providing us. I appreciate it. I don't check the international reviews very often. Just And, and so it's really cool to see a, a funny update like that. Also, I will <laughs> add, in checking the international reviews, I noticed that in the Great Britain version of iTunes, we have 4.5 stars. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
okay. So what is the... Luckily, Robin is he's keeping the weighted average up. He's he gave us five stars, but don't... we don't have a review to support it. It's just somebody it's just else. Somebody, who's somebody like gave us four stars. What the fuck? <laughs> That's... No comment. Ah, uh, it's just our. That's col- our first our... four star review. It's yeah. just our colonial masters trying yeah. to keep us down. That's right. <laughs> But frankly, we we're lucky to have maintained our unblemished record for this long. I don't know. And this is a dark day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are super excited because this week we are going to be joined in studio by Mr. Mike Seibert, who is <laughs> flying in from Seattle. He's not here yet. But he's going to be here soon. He's winging his way. Yeah, so we're, we're looking forward to it. We expect a, a call in, a little check-in from him here soon. But that's something that definitely we're super excited about. So be on the lookout. Um, <laughs> l- Want to get in the last episode recap? Sure. All right, I don't know why I asked you. I don't either. You've never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> the Decepticons pulled a classic Malamarian maneuver, distracting the most competent Autobots and allowing them to kidnap Sparkplug. New Decepticon ally and third place Dr. Emmett Brown cosplay winner Dr. <laughs> Arkville inserts a mind control device making Sparkplug his slave. Mm-hmm. Several heartbreaking father and son moments later, Megatron has activated two of three pylons that will open a space bridge to Megatron. What? That will open a space bridge, <laughs> bringing Cybertron into Earth's orbit. <laughs> he manages to convince Prime to set off the third pylon, uh, telling him that if he doesn't, Cybertron's doomed. They're still friends back there. Has Has Optimus Prime saved Cybertron only to doom Earth? Let's find out. <laughs> All right. So we're going to continue the story with episode 12, The Ultimate Doom, Part 2. This aired uh, November 10th, 1984. I'm going to say real quick up top, uh, I had to end up picking and choosing what I made notes about because this one is a lot, and it would have been like 10 pages if I just decided to write down everything I was thinking while I was watching this. Yeah. Um, also, whatever happened to Spike journaling? <laughs> Just like all of us who might have journaled, you like quit what? after the yeah, first yes, couple yes. Of times you do it. <laughs> all right, we up top we have Victor Caroli who catches us up, and then we open up on Cybertron rising up on the horizon, eclipsing Earth's own sun. <sighs> so yeah, right, and instantly we have Spar- Spike and Sparkplug do an exchange. Sparkplug says, "Look." And he runs away. So here's what I started thinking about. I get that Dr. Arkville is making slaves, but why did you have to make them evil? Why not just make them, like, mindless slaves? But no, he's so crazy, he built this maniacal, like, malice into his slaves. Maybe he didn't build malice into his slaves. He just made all the slaves hate their sons. <laughs> he That's their backstory, Caleb. He's trying to get back at his dad. I, I do want to know Arkfield's backstory. I'm, I am actually... <laughs> well, I'll work on some fan fiction for you. Nice. I have a graphic that I'm making I think you'll enjoy okay, about that, awesome. about how the how Megatron met Dr. Arkfield. Okay. Um, awesome. th- and, and just right on the hot on the heels of that, we see these like the wind blowing in the trees, which they actually are blowing towards Cybertron, but get Given the animation in this show, mostly, I think that's got to be a happy accident. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just it just worked out that way. As we get a, to this scene where uh, Ironhide and Prime are hanging out together, <laughs> there's some definitely weird overlap of... Should, like, Prime's, oh, hands, Prime's hands are overlapping Ironhide's shoulders, <sighs> but he's cl- Ironhide is clearly standing... Who's that... Uh, 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 in a in a direction that that wouldn't happen. Well, it's, Optimus's feet are behind, right? But his well, hand is, is in, in front, front of, of Iron. Basically, what has happened now is the cell layers. Optimus Prime's cell layer is too high on the screen, so it looks like he's standing yeah. behind Ironhide, but mm-hmm. is enormous. But yeah. then his hand is like on Ironhide's you know, shoulder. It's also very the weird. scale Check. is wacky because I'm pretty sure yeah. Ironhide is supposed Check. to be closer in height. Check to the credits. Prime than that. Maybe M. C. Escher was a guest illustrator <laughs> on this one. <laughs> It is very possible. So they're talking. Prime, their feet. Yeah, they, you can tell that whoever animated this, these cells, they didn't intend for the feet to even show up because they, they no, they're, in, they're supposed to be in the grass. Uh, the uh, the Autobots have mixed feelings about the appearance of their home world. Prime questions his decision to have turned on that pylon, but Ironhide consoles him. 
Prime, you did what any of us would have done. That's disturbing. Which is fuck <laughs> fuck over Earth to save yeah, Cybertron. That's disturbing. <laughs> Uh, again, we can't relitigate it. I am the holdout who said I think he didn't made the right decision, but that's just that's that's just me. We don't have to relitigate it. Mm-hmm. Megatron is definitely feeling himself. I would. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes through a moment where he, where he gloats his ass off with the wind. The drawings in this ep- episode are exceptionally good, and mm-hmm. in the next episode, yeah. I think they're all oh, toe eye toe eye I have, animation you know, studio. I don't. I don't notice a lot of things, but I, I would say, <laughs> or at least you certainly don't comment on them. <laughs> uh, but I, I will say that the uh, some of the animation sequence, particularly in the next episode, which we'll discuss. Next then, episode's very some nice. Pretty kick-ass sequences. Okay, yeah, good angles. Um, Spike can't handle Megatron's gloating. He runs to a pylon, aims it at Megatron, and at another pylon at the same time. I mm, guess. Yeah. And he shoots, which whatever. is now a power I, that I guess these. Space bridge yeah. things have. Yeah. So they can shoot some kind of energy projectile. And Spike knows how to use them, too. Megatron dodges what is fired at him, and it ends up taking out one of the other pylons. And this is where a fight breaks out. You've got Starscream. Mm-hmm. He fires haphazardly. Ravage jumps Optimus. Yeah, we ha- see that, again, Soundwave's tapes are like the bane of Prime's existence. Yeah. No fear there with those things. And the, the heavy wind, it knocks a large limb off of a tree, which... Rube Goldberg's into some yes. power lines. Weird. Which shock Ravage off of Optimus Prime. In jet mode, Starscream... Er, so, well, first of all, Starscream and, and Thundercracker take off. And yeah. in jet mode, Starscream orders Thundercracker to yeah. use his air flamethrower, even though they're facing strong headwinds. So Thundercracker protests, but Starscream's like, do it anyway! Yeah, this was That flame thing is a, a power we saw from uh, episode SOS Dinobots, where he shoots uh, slag with it. Did he? Yep. I don't recall. Yep. Okay. It happened, and it, it, and it happened. And then Jazz, <laughs> whenever it blows back in their face, Jazz goes, that'll teach you to play with fire, blundercracker! <laughs> he does. It, he, and he also says, I've heard of a hot foot... But that's the first hot nose I ever saw. That was Trailbreaker says that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that was a weird line. It would have been a perfect moment for a hot wing joke. Oh. Hot mm. nose doesn't make sense. Go for a hot wing. Sure. I also feel like they're taking this real casual, like with right. all this destruction yeah. going on, they're laughing their asses yeah, off. They are. Like a bunch of good time Charlies. Yeah. <laughs> they're not doing shit except standing around making jokes. Kind of like us. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb just leaves the room. Right. <laughs> you hear the door, the car door slam. Three weeks later, he's the CEO of a multi-billion-dollar company. <laughs> Rumble is blue, but not. He's he's got a job to do here. Out come the pile drivers. He is overtaken by seismic activity, not by his own making, but by the forces at play from the Cybertronic displacement. That's what's happening yep. here. Good job. One hundred percent. And then, yeah. Oh, <laughs> then, yeah, sound wave makes Ooh. audio disruptor ra- waves. Yeah, everybody's very going, weird. Everybody's going crazy. Megatron says, "Clear the area," and oh. those those disruptor rays have a unique sort of effect on people differently. Yeah. <laughs> Like, they make me talk like a bozo. <laughs> Everybody, so pissed up the Decepticons run away. And but the, I did, there's a weird, like, that w- Prime's transformation is a cool, like, reverse angle on his transformation into truck mode as the Autobots retreat. And then his trailer comes up, like, in this weird glowing lines thing, which is kind of cool. Doesn't make any sense, but it's yeah. very so cool. this thing is driving everybody away. It will, so, yes and no. The ray, I, like, what I was trying to say was that it has differing effects on different subjects. Okay. You've got Starscream and Thundercracker seem to be affected by it because they start mm-hmm. flying a little bit weird. Jazz and Optimus Prime seem definitely fucked up by it because Prime commands a retreat and no one seems to have a problem following him. The humans are just generally kind of freaking out and they imply I it, I guess I, that it frees the humans. Yeah, from well, control? Dr. Orville literally says in the next scene okay. that it, it, it frees them from control. And yeah, and then Bumblebee. Here. Except for Sparkplug. Yeah, and that's inexplicable. That's never touched on. Why, why doesn't free Sparkplug so from the control? So it doesn't fuck with Sparkplug. He climbs into Skywarp and flies away. And 
Dr. Arkville, I think he just says, no worry, I'll just create more slaves. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, but then, there's this weird part where Spike, as he's getting yeah. into Bumblebee, is, he seems like he's drunk or like yeah. his mind yeah. has no, snapped. I, I, it doesn't go anywhere. No, it was weird. The, and, and he does that a couple of more he's times He's like this, this for like half the episode. Like he's, he's disoriented or yeah. uh, he's really, really aloof. And I was like, what the fuck's wrong with him? So do you think what they're trying to do is say that these waves impacted him i don't know mm. no b- b- because when he's all right we'll get to it in a minute but after this he's when he's riding in bumblebee yeah he's got his arm up on the seat oh yeah he's like super ca- i think he's like it's almost like he's high it yeah. does seem like but i think it's meant to imply just mental turmoil from his dad but yes yeah he's but acting like he's all but Corey burton is a reasonable actor what well, that well, i'm not to blaming Corey <laughs> for I'm, this i'm saying that his what, if that Blame is, Wally Burr. If that is what he is supposed to be implying is that he's just all stressed out from his dad. Well, I'm I think the animation that. more than the voice acting is what sells yeah. it. I mean, they go together. They're obviously together. And, in the, I and mean, the, the pacing, like, let's we could watch it real quick. You can see how, like, lo- like there's a long pause. Well, he does look back and see his dad yeah. flying off. But then watch. I mean, it doesn't uh, sound like he's I, distressed I in that he, way. It sounds like he is becoming a slave. I felt like I, I, I think he's bummed out because of his dad, but it just it's just and I still think that that's the case. But the it's just it's the, very handled. Very weird. Yeah, the play, it's Yeah, it's, it's the placement's very odd. Hmm. What'd you say? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> well, All right. I'm not just draft. <laughs> then like the, so the Autobots run away and then we get to this part where. I mean, you probably have a lead up to it, but you're talking about Starscream, yeah, confronting Megatron for letting the Autobots get away, and Megatron uh, pops him a good one. Mm-hmm. So I have a couple of things about this, uh, Aaron. If you remember, uh, I think it was last episode. Yes, uh, I have to apologize to you. Uh oh, yeah, this is the first time I've ever been wrong. It's unprecedented. Um, but the last episode, I poo-pooed your idea about there being some regulation concerns with throwing humans, and mm-hmm. that's like why Optimus Prime lassos him and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Well, it turns out that was true. What? And um, so in the script, in the original script, uh, Skywarp or Thundercracker, I can't remember which, does throw him, and Optimus Prime catches him. But to get, like, apparently, and I couldn't find the place where um, I read this, but uh, the reason... That that he did the lasso is because you couldn't punch, choke, or throw like people, and this episode actually does break that because Megatron both chokes and punches Starscream. But is it humans that it's not human specific? It's just characters, really. But like the choking in particular was how I came across that. So I'm assuming huh. that that's why they did the lasso is that. But they was... punch people. He punches you. Punch people all the time in this. Yeah, I feel like that show. too, and also on GI Joe. So maybe I'm just thinking mainly. Again, I couldn't find where I found it, so I think I got to it from the him choking Starscream, which was something that like was a no no. Homer chokes Bart Simpson all the time. Well, that was that was the '90s. <laughs> Different time. <laughs> Technically, that started in the late '80s. Well, December of '89. How... That's still wow. the '80s. Way to pull out the facts. I know that because of the 80s mural I made. <laughs> it also actually makes sense because I think the very first was a Simpsons Christmas episode. Tracy Ullman. <laughs> before, before, before that. You're right, though. He was probably choking Bart on Tracy Ullman before. Maybe I'm wrong about all this and it was a dream. Ryan is Maybe all of this is a dream. This is a, like a. I used a, to read Word Up magazine. A Jacob's Ladder situation. Mm-hmm. Or, or a, a St. Elsewhere situation. Or um, uh, what is the, was it? Da- it wasn't Dallas. It was uh, fuck. It was the show. Uh, Mary, not Mary, Mary Tyler Moore. No, um, are you thinking of uh, the Bob Newhart show? Yes, where he wakes up and it was all a dream. Yeah. Yes. Maybe it's that. <laughs> These are all viable all dream right. options. All right. Is it me naked chasing a little person through a Macy's situation? What is that? What? That's what I dreamed last night. Did you really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I don't know why. You you were naked chasing a little and person. And I don't remember dreams. When you say a little person, were they like a tiny person or were they like a dwarf? A yeah, it was actually a tiny person. Like were they not a not man, a man or like woman. a smurf sized human being. Man yes. or woman. It was a, oh my 
gosh, I can't remember the gender. What I depart- think it was multiple. There was what there was multiple. What department were you in? Clothes. There was clothing. Clothing. Mm-hmm. But you didn't have any on. I didn't have any. How on. ironic is that? <laughs> but I remember looking around. Just trying the to racks. get him up inside. Were you yeah. like after them? Were you like emotionally angry? Or were you just like, what? I can't remember why I was chasing them. But what I also remember was I was really scared to step on them. I was oh. afraid I was going to step on them. So I needed to chase them, but apparently I did not want to You just wanted to capture them. them. Right. That's interesting. And I, would, I, and I felt something under my foot at one point, and I was really scared and sad for a second because I thought I squished it, up. and it, well, I you, didn't. Know. Do you remember, this was like... 70 episodes ago but there was a craigslist ad i read where it was called i want to chase so i want somebody to chase me yeah that was hilarious (laughs) so i think that's a fascinating dream that you have and i'm sure that a psychologist could pick that apart to high heaven um oh one so just to round this out where megatron so at this point megatron lets the autobots go Mm -hmm. and that's why starscream is so pissed off right and in watching this i'm like he lets the autobots get away a lot and which is what causes Starscream to be like, what the fuck? So I feel like I have a theory that Megatron doesn't really want to win the or- war against the Autobots, and he just gives them out, or maybe he, it's like even subconscious where he he does he he doesn't necessarily want to win. Um, like back in Divide and Conquer, he told Starscream to call off the attack when the Decepticons were about to win, and then he somehow for some reason has the Autobots go to Cybertron with the acid rain. I don't remember Divide and Attack. Divide and conquer, or divide and conquer enough to speak to that. But I can, I think I can speak to this in that I feel that he's playing a long game, and his main goal is to get all this energy onto Cybertron so that he can take over the universe. And what he needed to do was clear the field so that he could get these. Well, he does say to clear to the field in just a second. Energon. It's true, but I just feel like this is why Starscream is such a maniac and power hungry because he's been watching Megatron grasp defeat from the jaws of victory for like f- f- millions of years. Perhaps. But check this out. Okay. <laughs> Bust this. Watch Caleb. There. I just wanted you to watch that backhand. It's okay. One of, be- one of the best backhands in the game. I've seen this as and, a GIF plenty and, of times. And that is what Ryan was referring to, the famous choke, choke. sequence. Yes. I, I, d- have, I did see it. Mm-hmm. I have a toy. It's uh, the Make Toys version of Starscream. It is over here on my shelf. And Make Toys also made a version of Megatron. And what came with their version of Starscream is an extra hand and head so that you could emulate this, they're connected. Wow. So you could put that hand on the Megatron that they made and re uh, I, I was gonna reenact. Say re- reenact. I remember when I used to know have a vocabulary. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's good, buddy. All right, back at the cons, under sea base. Oh my God, Doctor Arkville. This is so... by the way, uh, Doctor Arkeville. Is it's how Arkeville? it's pronounced. No, it's not. He okay. Vince Caroli says Doctor Arkeville. It is properly pronounced Doctor Arkville through most of the episodes. Gotcha. But he answers the phone here when Megatron's calling in. He says Doctor Arkeville. You have reached Doctor Arkeville. Spare me your pomposity and report. <laughs> Really? I also he answers the phone in a really weird way though. Like like he's all like it like it's a joke. <laughs> he's crazy. Uh, the, before we even get there, right as soon as we get back, like spark plug is spread eagle and prone on yeah. an, on a fucking platform yeah. with what appears to be a very probe like device close to his anus and then like rumbles looking on uh, watching whatever's going to go down. <laughs> it's it's uh, straight out of kink.com. <laughs> I didn't realize what good shape Sparkplug yeah. was in. He's that, got a nice ass. He's, he's, and look at his thighs, man. He's all kinds of thick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, mm, 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 mm. That is weird. Archieville. Yeah. What is with his face in this? <laughs> it's drawn super fucked up like he's turning into a troll. He has, or his teeth are trying to escape his face. Yeah, it does have sort of chimp-like proportions. It does. It does. All right. Le- <laughs> it's fucked up. I want to know more about this man. I think it's just, uh, oh, the, oh, the man. The man himself, not the animation. <laughs> the, okay. man, the man under the yarmulke. 
The, here's the report. The captives have all been fitted with hypno chips and they're under Decepticon control. Yeah. Megatron is going to bring him more raw material. I assume that's in the form of slaves here shortly. K this is where Laserbeak goes on a kidnapping spree, attacking what is probably a power plant, but they're not interested in energy. They're interested in the men I see. <laughs> oh, good. Well done. Uh, I will say, Laserbeak sounds like Ravage here. I, oh shit! And then he picks up these two dudes, and I. So I've been listening to um, uh, I listened to more than meets the pods review of the Ultimate Doom Part One, and they mentioned the prevalence of mustaches and the union worker slaves that they have there. Mm -hmm. And so we just had Laserbeak pick up two mustachioed dudes. Yeah. So the trend continues. Mustaches were just a trend in the eighties, hey, just baby. like they are now. It's true. I have, I'm wearing one right now. I don't feel like mustaches have been as prevalent. Except for now, since they were in the 80s. Yeah, the 70s and 80s. and 80s were really the heyday, and then they've made a comeback. My as well as beards have made a comeback also. My I don't feel like the modern comeback is ironic. I think it started as ironic, but I think it's becoming more status a quo. thing. Yeah, I mean, more I have an unironic mustache. Yeah, you do. You do. My dad had a mustache all through the 80s. My dad had a mustache up until like probably Floyd, like 10 years ago. Your dad had a great mustache. I never had a dad. <laughs> <laughs> stashed or otherwise <laughs> laserbeak drops the mustached slaves into a pit which glows with power rumble enters the pit and takes the one with the mustache and maybe dr arkerville has a type <laughs> he totally does <laughs> they, I, I, actually they both have mustaches yes. but the one with the better mustache for whatever reason rumble approaches they're in kind of a trail breaker like yeah like surge of elect circular electrical energy. Energy field, yeah. Yeah. Rumble takes Which him. just pulls him through it. What do you think he's going to do with him? Whoa. It feels ominous. Well, oh Rumble enjoys... He is very sadistic in this and the next episode. He uh, likes to fuck with people. Yeah. It's it's hardcore. But it doesn't explain what he's doing with that guy. He's taking him to Dr. Arkville. To do what? To, to experiment on him. Put a, put a chip in him. Yeah. Okay. Although I don't know why you drop him in the pit in, in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. They're not going to have him rumble or something. Oh, I mean, oh, fight. Ooh, I, see. Oh. I don't see. I, yeah. That was a total accident, and I wish it had I do happened. also like the idea that they've decided on the most inefficient way of collecting humans possible is to have Just laser, laser beak pick grab them up a couple at a time. One or two at a time. And he had to have been working for weeks because, as we'll see, they have hundreds of slaves. Mm -hmm. Right. Did I already say that it feels like Dark Dr. Arkville likes to say slaves a lot? You didn't, but yes, I mentioned that last episode where he <laughs> says it a lot, and it feels very weird. In, in the third episode coming up, it'll get, he says it even more. It's just really <laughs> weird. And he says it differently and more emphatically every slaves. time. <laughs> uh, the Autobots. Oh we're we're, we're going to go visit them for a little bit. They're tailgating each other to try and find their way home they can't see anything mm -hmm. so what is optimus prime gonna what's do what's he gonna do to to help things out caleb what's he do uh he... that's right he reverses polarity <laughs> exactly. on his windshield oh yeah <laughs> he reverses polarities to repel rain and, and hail, hail molecules <laughs> everything's better now it also implies in his alt mode he sees through his windshield yeah, he shouldn't need it. It that. also implies that he doesn't understand science at all. <laughs> well, it works. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Ha True. Okay, we, we've talked about reversing polarities in the movie. Mm -hmm. Have we talked about it on the show or on G.I. Joe since then? I think the only time trope. we talked about it was during the Call the Primitives where Grimlock, okay. it was just a reverse. He reversed, they reversed polarities. Yeah. That's right. Bumblebee. This is where we see for the second time Spike acting a little weird. I so do I turned like, on the volume a little. Yeah, bit. I do like the wind and the smoke like Look blowing across the. He's just like weirdly yeah, chilling out. out. The yeah. Oh god, this part fucking bubble blows just, a tire. Like, Spike, and then I I feel like really like so Spike jumps out to help Bumblebee change a tire, but Bumblebee does really everything. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty weird, but like he change he he chucks a spare out of his own trunk. Mm -hmm. He jacks himself up. He unscrews his own bolts. Yeah, they pop off. I feel like maybe Bumblebee is just trying to like um snap him out of it. Maybe he's just trying to give him something to do to get his mind off but of what's it. What's he snapping out I of? I do like on the wheel. Being upset about his dad. 
on the wheel, you'll see there the, the, letter, the W. The letter W. There's a W on the wheel. Does that mean something? Yes, there is. <laughs> Let me look on the internet real quick, and okay, I'll explain great. it. Does to it you. mean Volkswagen? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're gonna go back to the Decepticons while Caleb looks that up. Megatron demands slave progress. <laughs> A screen flips on to show a number of slaves collecting lightning from the furious earth storms, creating all the energon cubes that the Decepticons will ever need. It is a ludicrous method of collecting electrical energy from lightning. You have these tiny little what look like searchlights operated by very, very fragile human beings that are standing next to this lightning being shot into these things. (laughs) Yes. It, It doesn't look like they're doing much of anything. Nope. Honestly, it looks like they're sitting there, <laughs> which makes me think, why do they need slaves? They just needed the mechanics to the work. The whole secondary plot of the slaves, yeah. I don't understand the why it's Dr. even in Arkville here. The whole Dr. Arkville thing feels unnecessary. It really does. Like, it's... Uh, I. I Especially in this episode, like in the last episode, I'm like, oh, this is a cool idea. But they don't do anything with it where it's like it means anything. No. It doesn't impact anything. They... Again, the slaves weren't really helping collect energy. No. They were just sitting there. <laughs> they right. carry it around later. But <laughs> is this the episode with Mirage? Or I is it next? think that I can't. Remember. I think it's the next one. Okay. These bleed together pretty pretty well. Spike finishes repairing Bumblebee, but a crack opens in the ground beneath them. Bumblebee is hanging on the ledge. Spike tries to save him, but he falls in too. Laserbeak swoops in snatches spike with tie fighter sounds allowing yeah. bumblebee to fall to his doom and that's where we go to a commercial break oh gosh uh so yeah we go to commercial i wonder we oh. we haven't heard from mike cyber i wonder in a while. what's up with our he's buddy. supposed to be on his way here yeah did you get a text or anything from him caleb no <laughs> <laughs> oh hey my phone's ringing oh <laughs> shit i better answer it <laughs> We have a special holiday surprise for everybody. We have a special caller on the line, our friend from Seattle, Mr. Mike Seibert of Mike Seibert Radio. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey. What's up? How are you? (laughs) I'm doing great. Well, I got to tell you, I have got some exciting news. I am actually going to be coming to visit you. I am braving the Ozarks, and I am going to check out the brand new arc studio i figured i would uh you know come check out your new equipment oh, maybe awesome. slice some of my fingers open on on aaron's uh, expensive third party toys you know and and celebrate the holidays with uh with my robo bros uh row bros if you will uh from uh the apod dc um the apod dc hmm. uh, i don't think you know who we are <laughs> hang on all right so so you're coming uh, all the way from my- seattle Yes, I am <laughs> traveling. I'm going to travel direct from Seattle to Missouri on Skylink. What? Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, serving as a passenger airline is beneath my capabilities, but I need the extra money for the holidays. Holy shit, Skylink. That was Skylinks for anyone who couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. What is who is who is that? Is Skylink's haunted? Well, um, kinda. So I, uh, um, I, I also have um, maybe some slightly unfortunate news. Uh, uh, maybe a, a haunted surprise for us. Um, hey guys! Oh shit! Uh, is that who I think it is? I'm hitching a ride in Mike's luggage. Luggage. I was in Seattle at TJ Maxx's Scareholder meeting. See you soon. Uh, not good. Prepare for landing. My superior navigation system will have us at your destination in 30 astroseconds. <laughs> Which we've established is like maybe eight hours or could be a nanosecond. Yeah, that checks out. Seems legit. But, um, um, that... That doesn't really look like Missouri. I I see kangaroos and holy shit, some obnoxiously large beer cans down there. Um, huh. I don't know, man. Something's not right. Uh, oh, 
I wonder I, they're flying over the wrong area. It sounds like it sounds like a totally different part of the world. Don't blame me. My instruments are flawless. This is obviously a miscalculation from air traffic control. Here's an one eight hundred number to help you. Goodbye. Look. <laughs> so bad news, guys. It um well. It, it looks like Skylink screwed up, and we are in Australia. Uh, Skylink flew us to Australia instead. Oh, 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 fucking plovers and bent chickens everywhere. <laughs> Scary. Oh. It's summer there right now, you know. Oh. Yeah, it's really hot. Uh, fans oh, are broken. <laughs> you got to make sure that, that your shit's unplugged. Oh. But we're, we're going to try to figure this out. Okay. Uh, oh man. Okay. Uh, I hope you get it figured out soon. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. Make good good luck. Okay. Bye. <laughs> good luck. Okay. We'll check back in with him later. I guess we're gonna just. I guess we'll just return from commercial. Oh yeah. And here, we're, <laughs> but when we get back from commercial, we instantly have this ongoing gag of Blue Streak shooting laser beak down. Yeah, I think it's a fun gag. Yeah, I like it. Right. Give uh, Blue Streak something to do. The thing that's a little odd about it is. They're Laser shoot- beak's flying with Spike. He's still holding Spike, and everybody's the- just firing at him. They yeah, could, they, that's and messed up. Near missing, but we've seen from Transformers the movie that Autobots have no problem shooting at humans to well, try and save them. They and in 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 the episode where they introduce the two new Dinobots, whenever they're like when uh, Ironhide is wrestling with Snarl, they're fucking just shooting him like just at him with him in the way. It's mm-hmm. it's they're, they're, they don't care, right? I guess we should believe that their aims are so good they could never hit the human. They would only hit their intended target. That except is not nobody evi- hits anything. That's they're, not evidenced on screen. No, and they're obvious. They're they're willing to have their home world destroy Earth. Mm-hmm. So who? What do they care? Yeah, they don't give a fuck about humans. I really at all. I have a lot of problems with the Autobots. Yeah, I know where the Decepticons stand. All right. Well. Hound is using some kind of Autobot detector to find Bumblebee. He gets a weak signal. Windcharger uses his tractor beam to pull Bumblebee in. They've got him. Yeah, uh, Windcharger uses, I guess, what is an extension of his magnetic powers, which I didn't mention earlier, but we see Jazz with magnetic powers ha- being ta- like holding on to Ironhide when they were driving, which was a weird thing that never comes back. But yeah, and they are all low on power, which all also doesn't come back in any way. That's but a, everybody keeps saying they're low on power. Mm-hmm. That go back to where like that's a problematic view. <laughs> back, go back. <laughs> I go back know again. what you're talking about. Oh, with Hound is using this device. Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a screen grab of that. Yeah. That's excellent. 10.25 for future one, reference. There's another one before it where you're looking right down the shaft. Yeah, baby. All yeah. right, everybody's low on power, but Windcharger, he, he has just enough to pull up Bumblebee from the crevasse, which is what he does. Bumblebee, because he's low on energy, gets into Hound <laughs> mm-hmm. to be driven home. Yeah, but weird. Windcharger presumably used all of his energy to bring Bumblebee back up, but he transforms into a car. You think and Bumblebee's himself. just being lazy? He's like, <laughs> Could I don't be. have the power to do it. <laughs> Could be. Help. You, you drive. Bumblebee is my cousin Larry. Oh. That's right. We're not editing that out. <laughs> Larry, <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> Who's Larry? <laughs> is it, is, I, get, I don't understand. Is he like lazy or is he always complaining about being out of power? <laughs> <laughs> he is lazy. Awesome. He, bar- he would always borrow money from my great aunt, and uh, it was my great aunt's I vaguely son. recall this. And he's my cousin, but he's not my age. He's old. You hung out with some I didn't have a father. <laughs> 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 I feel like that's going to be the name of this episode. <laughs> yeah. Aaron hang out, hung out with some great people growing up. <laughs> I had all these role models. Daniel, Daniel the truck driver. Go back and find that episode. The, the cool janitor. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my new dad? <laughs> yeah, Larry. No, Larry. The one good thing about Larry is that he, that's how I discovered pornography. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Super. He's the one that had the boxes of pornography that well, I, appreciate, uh, I, would dis- I would distribute amongst my friends. I appreciate Larry, too, in retrospect, then, because I benefited <laughs> oh, no. from that as well. Oh, no. Stroke books. Other than that, he was pretty Stroke much garbage. Books. Stroke books. Stuck porn. <laughs> Oh, duck porn? No. We've already we already talked, talked about, about that. Porn. Oh, that's right. That's I right. checked that out, by the way. Did you, did you make it come? No. I, I, no. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's I, the dumbest I thing. I was just shocked at the, 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 how the, vo- 
There's a lot refresh of that. Everybody's, oh, yeah. Refresh everybody's memory. Stuck on born is, is right? whenever it's, a, it's usually like some stepmother situation where she's stuck under the sink or she's stuck, stuck in the oven or stuck under the bed. Or the weirdest one I saw, she was stuck in a play school playhouse. Yeah. And like, so the dude comes up and like is fucking her, like fucks her and not in a rape way, but kind of like rapey. Yeah, it's like mm. she's into and it. But like she's usually reluctant. her son or stepson. Usually stepson. Yeah. Find, finds her that way. It's very upsetting. That's the thing, and yeah, when he, when he first told me, I was like, "What's that?" I I looked into it. Yeah, it's a thing. I, it's weird because I feel like most pornography is derivative of things that happen in real life. Not Nobody, anymore. Uh, Nobody's uh, just getting stuck in shit. But also, like, I've also I I I. I know it's not real, but I can't look at anything where it's like stepmother, stepma, or stepmother, stepdaughter, and, and friend. Because I'm like, I don't like the fantasy aspect of it. I just want people to fuck. I don't really want oh, a story. Well, that's but then also, like, I don't like Mister Self Righteous. I can't. Over here. I can't. I think I just don't like lying. But <laughs> I, I don't like the all the ones where it's like, hey, she, I had a hard on and she helped me with it. I don't know. I just hate that term. You don't like lying so that's why you don't like this it's step. mainly that i don't like what if it was a porno made by a real stepmother stepson situation totally fine Yikes. with it <laughs> but you like hollywood movies that yes but they're not portrayed as like this is real and i just think it's i know nobody thinks it's real but i don't like it being portrayed as real when we know it's not real so it just irritates me yes on a moral like ethical so level. our next episode I'm going to have a segment of uh, – sh- I'm going to show Ryan clips of stuck porn, <laughs> and I'm just going to – but I'm still going to call it Is This Music. <laughs> <laughs> to my ears. <laughs> I don't even know where the fuck we are. Uh, oh, no, we, yeah, we – wow. Okay. They just uh, drove – Hound and Bl- Bumblebee drove off. We're going back to Decepticon headquarters. Yep. That's where we're going. S- you've got Skywarp. You've got Spark Plug and a cockpit – Full of energon, and Megatron is going to send all of that to Cybertron. Doctor Archiville, you were going to say something. Um, and, and th- this is so weird where Doctor Archiville comes in to ask what he's doing with him, but right, he's holding Doctor Archiville is holding his left shoulder throughout this scene, and it's never. I don't understand why he's doing it. Mm, yeah, right. I think it's just the uh, animator's decision. What's the name of the animator who is? Well, it's the, obviously a de- an animator's decision. Oh, you mean right? They're I think they're, they're no, just making. They're no, I think they're just. Uh, they just made the decision to have him do a pose that was different. Is all I can. Well, think the of. weird, I guess, but he does it in every part of the scene. Like he walks out of the room like that. You think maybe at some point there was there was. Like it's a lazy animator's decision. <laughs> it's not even though it's harder to animate than just having his arms on the you side was, of his body. You think there was something that might have been cut out that where he was injured. Maybe That's I think a, you're right. Yeah, you're right. He has his arm. Yeah, the whole time. No, something happened. Yeah, I feel like they cut out a scene, and there wasn't Again. anything in script deviations where. So yeah, it's just very weird. Again, I want to know more about this man. There are a lot of audio recordings available from the G One series that are outtakes hmm. that you really? can find and listen to that are pretty intriguing, and maybe there is an outtake to this that explains that. There's some cool ones where they had to re-record. They, because they called Jetfire Jetfire in the early episodes, and apparently that became a no-no, so they re-recorded mm-hmm. and it was Skyfire. There, there's a there's, a, and they get released all the time. There's actually it feels like there's a new one that comes out, and I don't know who's got these recordings and who's putting them out, but they seem to come out every few months. There's a new crop hmm. of, of bonus recordings. I need to check that out. So Archiville's like you can hear Wally Bird just ripping into somebody. There's a line somewhere where Archiville's like. I need to, like, I just got back from the chiropractor or <laughs> something like that. And it, or he's like, he was just in, like, he's at, he's at shot put practice. Yeah, yeah. Softball. <laughs> 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 the goddamn Huckville Rangers beat us again. Oh, the Huckville Rangers. <laughs> That's the name of their I love team. Huckville's team. But, you know, his team's just full of slaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all slaves. Speaking of slaves, he gets very upset mm-hmm. that one of his slaves is being used to go to Cybertron. And but moments ago, we saw him not <sighs> upset at all that all, all of his slaves, slaves <laughs> got freed. He was just like, "I'll just give me some more slaves." So what's up? He's all over the place. I feel like he <laughs> really needs to get back on his medication. Yeah, Megatron reports that they have duplicated his 
computer on Cybertron that allows them to uh, hold the slaves captive. So no big deal at all. And Dr. Arkville reminds him, hey, don't forget, when this is all done, Earth is mine. And Megatron is like, yeah, sure. When you are through with it, it will be what's left of it. <laughs> Which feels like a total monkey's paw situation. Dr. Arkville wishes to be in control of Earth, but the Earth that he gets will just be a burnt up rock. Right. Sure. I agree. All right, I guess I'll. I'll, I'll I'm allow sorry, it. I had to explain it. I'll allow it. I did. I was. I. I know the monkey's paw. I was just trying to figure out where well, the connection was, but I got it. Yep. No, Arkville totally is bummed out that he's going to like a, 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 inherit a shithole. Yeah, but it feels like he's not thinking that far ahead. Cybertron's Even already though here, tearing the planet. In the apart. Pa- this last episode, he makes that specific point. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. a lot. The relationship between Doctor Arkville and Megatron and Starscream, as we'll see probably in the next episode. It's really weird. It's really weird. It's not well well thought out. I propose that Dr. Arkville shouldn't have been in any of these episodes. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. We'll continue, and we'll come back to the conversation on whether this all mattered <laughs> at all. I feel like of this story arc, part one, two, and three, it gets worse as it goes along. I think so. I think so. I'll have to remember though because I've already forgotten. I'll have to refer to my old my other notes. <laughs> okay, do it. We'll do it right now. We'll wait. Nope. <laughs> Skywarp leaves the base and heads to Cybertron as the worst versions of every natural disaster occur simultaneously. You've got skyscraper sized tsunamis, you got floods, you got fires, you got earthquakes, cavens. Billy Joel needs to write a song about this. Did he write songs about natural disasters? Oh, I'm just thinking we didn't start the fire, but those were more man-made <laughs> social <laughs> situations. Just historical <laughs> events. Volcanoes, tidal waves. <laughs> there we go. Keep it going. Uh, hail molecules. <laughs> reverse <Wow>. polarity. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Perfect. Tonight. The funniest thing, just so I, I, you posted your, your, your Kendrick Lamar Spotify uh-huh. uh, love. Uh, the, so this week, like I, we saw, I guess Spotify was notifying people of what they listen to throughout the year. Yeah, that's what that the was. funniest tweet I saw in response to that was: Is Spotify somehow forcing you people to share that with us? Right. <laughs> Shit, that makes me look like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Yours was funny though because it was just all Kendrick Lamar, <laughs> all of it. Uh, there was a little bit that wasn't, but yeah, it really was a lot. Of I Lamar. showed that to West, and she was like, um, "Yeah, that's me." Except Spotify was me- like Megan the Stallion. <laughs> Mm. Making the sound, it's hot. She She's is hot and shit. dirty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm down. Yep. I l- I like the idea of of, uh, of climbing a big woman. <laughs> <laughs> She's very tall. Ryan, you are a living embodiment of those old art. The crumb, crumb cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> just let you just want him to give you a piggyback ride. <laughs> ride with me, their, with, I with their, like ride around the room. The big, big old asses play just. horse and rider. <laughs> oh, <God>. Damn it! <laughs> gone. Stuck under the sink. <laughs> this has gone weird. Back at Autobot headquarters, the Autobots devise themselves a plan. The Dinobots can fix this mess. Fuck yeah, yay, Dinobots! Somehow. <laughs> also, though, are they kept inside that room all the time? It's a sex dungeon. It just looks like they're, again, this is a wheeljack situation where the, this door <laughs> opens up and the Dinobots are just behind it, like uh, in this closet. And it made me think of our Transformers the Movie script deviations where he creates the Anabots, which in reality later become the Predacons. But that's behind door number two. They're ke- yes, they're kept in cages. And I'm like, would, so he just I also like, makes slaves. I've got another fan fiction idea. I think it'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. It's it's where Dr. Archiville and Wheeljack team up. Oh, and Jesus just make Christ. Fu- and just make fucked up stuff. <laughs> With science. Yes. It'd be awesome. What are, we, what are you going to call that? That that crossover? Arc Jack. Mm, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it. Wheelville? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jackaville? <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be like an 80s, like it'd be Wheeljack and Archiville. That's yeah. the spinoff? Yeah. They're buddy cops? Yeah, it's like Simon and Simon kind of deal. One of their names comes in at an angle from one side, yeah. and one of their names <laughs> comes in from an angle on the other side, and then they both come at your face. <laughs> That's right. 
Yeah, I'm down with that. Wheel Jack and Arkaville, 80s sitcom, crazy Wheel, fucking science stuff. Wheel Jackaville. We don't have to mash their names no. together. Yes, I think you do. I think that's the rule. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prime commands the Dinobots to take action, but frankly, uh, my dear Dino, Grimlock doesn't give a fuck if this planet crumbles like a cicada's husk until Wheeljack reminds him that he's on the goddamn planet that's going to fall apart, so he's like, okay, we'll help. Yeah, and throughout this whole thing, the Ad- Adabots are, again, all reactive and not proactive. They're putting out, like, the little fires of, like, hey, let's yeah. stop the disasters, not deal with Cybertron. Really dumb. Um, and, oh, go ahead. Did you see that? Yeah, there's a satellite. Uh, with the next scene, we see the, like, Cybertron rise above the horizon, and there's a satellite that passes in front of the, <laughs> the, the scenery. Like, how low is that fucking satellite? Well, I, I should think, you know, Probably very low because everything's fucked up right now, so I shouldn't question it. Like it's been thrown out of orbit, yes. and it's actually just... Yeah. yeah I, if it's that close, to, it should be on fire. <laughs> okay. Ryan, can you tell me how big Cybertron is? We can't from, do this. From You're going to make me so mad <laughs> from this angle. <laughs> the disasters are impacting the Decepticon's ability to transport the Energon to Cybertron. This made me so mad. Like, who, oh, who would have thought our underwater base would be affected by tsunamis and fucking earthquakes? Yeah, yeah. The tidal waves that we're going to see literally knock the top off of their uh, oh, phallic, yeah. phallic launching yeah. pillar. Yeah, they Lorena Bob at their base. Which is a bummer because I really like the Decepticon base a lot. I think it's awesome. I can't remember if they're going to continue to use that pillar, if that's something that just exists in these early episodes. Uh, I don't. Re- I don't know. Maybe they're just forget about it. They're like, yeah, they got it's fixed. Still there, they, <laughs> right? You, they, you just don't see it getting used on camera. Yeah. So yeah, the tidal waves they launch the they knock the pillar over. The base starts flooding at this point, and Megatron he is going to blast a way out for everybody. He takes care of business, though. He, he what does he say? Out of the way, or something. Out of like the that. way. <laughs> Get back. <laughs> Good for him. I, at this point, I was like, actually, he's taking saving care his of, bros. Yeah, he said, get back. He's taking care of business. This is interesting right here. Um, it's like a sad Transformers theme. It's like a saxophone kind of. Not really a saxophone. Well, I don't know. I, c- I couldn't it, remember. They, but those are stringed instruments. <laughs> Whatever. Music, I don't know right? what music is. <laughs> but we also get to see that outbuilding we haven't seen since, like, the second episode. There's some things wrong with that. They, they Yes, they're going into the outbuilding, but this is clearly the room with Teletran 1, which yeah. is in the big building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they just decided to pan onto that random building and then show you inside <laughs> the yard. I think according to the TF Wiki... Remember, this exists. It's supposed to be Wheeljack's laboratory, I think is what that building's oh, supposed to be. Good to know that. I don't know why we never guessed that before. I don't know. He's got to have a laboratory on everywhere. That's true. We're going to see one later in the next episode too. As we, as you might have guessed, we're back at Autobot headquarters. Spike is hanging out in the uh, in the, the tool shed here, and <laughs> Prime is trying to console him over his father's defection. Fucking <laughs> holding a wrench, his dad's favorite wrench. I know. <laughs> it's so silly. The whole favorite wrench. <laughs> Plot device here. I was going to bring a wrench to the recording. And I, forgot. I totally fucking forgot. I could just go get a wrench out, out of the other room and we could put it on the table. What do you want to do with that wrench? Talk about it. I was going to talk about it. Just What's beat that? it against your palm. Like have a dad, like we have one of my dad's stories to go with it or something. They ponder why so many humans seem to be joining the Decepticons and just then the very volcano that they're in <clears throat> explodes with activity they've got to get the hell out of there most of the Autobots get out in time but what we do see is Ratchet, Huffer, oh, and Windcharger blasted out through the top of the volcano Skyfire luckily is there to fly up and save them but somebody's got to turn off that volcano So <laughs> you rolled right over it but fucking... Windcharger, Ratchet, and Huffer are exploded out of the top yeah. of Mount St. Hilary. That yeah. made me laugh so fucking hard when yeah. I first saw that. 
It is so silly. That I would think would kill you dead more than a Megatron shot to the. One would Just imagine, this is, and well, this is the end of the arc, right? We're not going to see it anymore, <laughs> right? Well, well no, Iron you will. saves it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you and know, how did they get caught up in the lava? They make it seem as though that lava flow somehow doesn't go through Autobot headquarters. If it did, yeah, the next time you they go to Autobot headquarters, it'd be covered in lava. Yeah, that's it what I make just said. Sense. The base is gone. It's covered in lava. Are they but it's the not. Game? In well, I thought you meant in real. Is this, I thought you meant literally. Is this the last time we saw? Like, um, you know, sorry, like, I took fuck. you seriously. Like fuck, you know, that's the end of the base, right? Fuck, We're never going to see anymore, right? When well, then we go to commercial. Oh, fuck, bro. Speaking of fuck, bros. <laughs> How's Mike and the ghost doing, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> I bet great. <laughs> I, I, my, uh, Caleb, now that you bring it up, I think it's a good time to check in with him. Uh, wh- why don't we just give him a call and see how he's doing? Okay. Beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, boop. <laughs> Mike. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, hook us up. What's up? You don't say hello when you answer the phone. You just launch into whatever you were about to say in the sentence. Got it. Hello, this is Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hello. How are things going? Every, is, did you get everything sorted out? Well, um, good news. Yeah, kind of. Uh, we, uh, we ended up hopping on a train after, uh, after getting chased down by Tina Turner in a giant monster truck. Um, there was, uh, there was shenanigans. It was nuts. Oh. Australia is nuts. Oh, that's crazy, Raggedy Man. Yeah, two ghosts in her, one ghost leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm it's glad to hear though. your voice. I'm just glad to hear that you're safe. But, but how, uh, how, how do you two plan on not only getting here, uh, in time, but you've got to get over the Pacific Ocean in a train? <clears throat> This is Astro Train. <laughs> leave, that, leave that to me, flesh creatures. Astro Train! <laughs> Prepare for liftoff, space monkeys. Now. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Oh. <laughs> wow, um, guess we spoke too soon. Uh, looks like we've, um, we've entered orbit and, uh, should be to the studio, uh, really soon. And oh, now cool. I know how cool. the Decepticons felt when the, when they left Autobot City, because we just totally got flipped upside down. <laughs> uh, speak for yourself, flesh creatures. We need to jettison some weight or I'll never make it to the studio. Well, first of all, pretty sure I think you mean mass, but I uh, <laughs> I don't understand. How can the two of us be too much weight or mass? Well, maybe it's that truckload of edibles I bought in Seattle and that block of clovers that Greg gave me in Australia. <laughs> oh, fuck my life. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort. We got to get rid of those. <laughs> oh, oh, how it pains me. Whoa! 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 Hey, uh, oh, what, what's, what's happening? What's going on with you guys? What's going on? <laughs> they, the, the plovers got loose and they're flying all around the cabin. They're swooping us like a dickhead. <laughs> oh, God. Are you now what's happening? Holy shit. In the, in the chaos, we fell out of the shuttle. Help. I don't have a parachute. <laughs> Hang on to me. My seat doubles as a parachute. Well, but where should I grab hold? Are, are these pillows gonna blunt the impact? Oh, 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 those are pillows. Ah! <laughs> oh man, we just lost contact with them. I hope the, they're gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they still go, so they're surely dead and plummeted into the ocean and drowned. Yeah, I mean sharks. Australian sharks are notable for the being the worst. That's not a shock. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll try to check in with them later. Oh, who gives a shit? Caleb, what do you think we should do? Uh, <laughs> he's quiet. He's he's stunned. He can't believe it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ironhide is going to hero- he has heroically driven into the base. And he's going to save 
the ark from this <sighs> volcano. He drives into the volcano. He explores the depths of the caverns here. He blasts the ceiling, which plugs up the volcano. Actually, that's a lot easier than expected. Yeah, also the opposite of how that would work. Because the reason volcanoes erupt is because they're plugged up. Yep, I read that. Mm-hmm. It also like is the weirdest thing of like it makes no more logical sense. But why not use your nit- liquid nitrogen powers here? It's just as ludicrous a solution. But right. Do you think that the Autobots forget what powers that they have? And I that's think it's why they don't use them all oh. the time. <laughs> There's some of them come back and some of them never do. It's so weird that those like the random things that stick and some that don't. But like I feel like Ironhide's nitrogen powers come back later too. It's just sometimes they just is it a nitrogen power or is it just the power to shoot random shit out of his wrists? I well he does make metal in that one episode. Right. Yeah. He also has fingers that shoot stuff out of it at some point. Does he? I don't know if it's already happened or not. I don't remember that. Ugh. Well, I've, and his masterpiece toy, he has a hand that sticks out and has little holes in the fingers. <laughs> Finger holes. So we'll look forward to yeah, that. The, mas- the third party people think everything. That's a Takara thing. What? This, this part where we cut to the Dinobots, yeah. Sludge is conservatively 150 feet tall. Uh, and I none of the things they do would work, but I like seeing them do it. Oh, sure. It, to your point earlier, they're putting out like a, a little fire they're mm-hmm. not getting to the heart of the issue when you bring out the dinobots you send them to cybertron to go kick some decepticons asses so you don't make trenches them, you, what they're doing is digging trenches and then putting trees up that i guess <laughs> I are guess. barricades i don't know what that's right. supposed to be no, happening it's ridiculous. There. i think it'd be funny if they like do all that stuff and just, it, does, it fails miserably like mm-hmm. it just doesn't work at all so we're gonna go back to that so that crisis i guess that tsunami crisis is averted we're gonna go back to autobot headquarters Ryan, it seemed like you had something to say about this it. This is so weird, though. Like, okay, because so we cut back to Prime oh, talking scene. to Wheeljack. This scene, yes. L- like, we, like Wheeljack is listening to him tell a story, sitting mm-hmm. on a rock, and what Prime says is, I'm not certain, but for the moment, I feel we must not let the boy find out. Find out what? Spike. Um, what is it? Uh, for the moment, I think it's important we not let the boy find out. Yeah. And Spike immediately walks up and is like, find out what? And the answer is that Sparkplug is on Cybertron. Yeah. But, like, why even the subterfuge if you're just instantly going to tell him? Yeah. yeah. They, don't, they, don't, they don't hesitate on that. Yeah. We shouldn't. He literally says we shouldn't tell him. <laughs> and then when Spike shows up, he tells him. Yeah. <laughs> like, two seconds. I don't know. Have you ever been in one of those situations where you're talking shit about somebody and then you didn't realize they were right by you and then you got to dig out of it a little bit? I've done that, but these guys don't dig out of it. They just immediately just tell them what's up. (laughs) In in fact, the way it looks... We were going to tell you the whole time, Spike. What they do here looks like the opposite. It looks like they they intentionally waited for him to walk up so that they could say that they're going to not tell him and then they give him disturbing news. Do you think they knew he was walking up and they intentionally said that they weren't going to tell him so he would hear that's them I, say they weren't going to tell him? That's what I just that's that's what I just said. Is it? I think so. I don't know. I tuned out. Fuck. <laughs> Judges. <laughs> Spike requests that he takes Skyfire to save his dad and discover the hold that he has on him <laughs> and the other humans, him being Sparkplug. And Skyfire says, you can count me in, which is great, because right. we can't do it without you. <laughs> well, here, back to what we were just talking about. When Prime makes that request, or when Spike makes the request to take Skyfire to Cybertron, Prime says no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he says, okay. <laughs> after, after Sky a lot of instant reversals. Yeah. That was a little convincing there. I guess. It wasn't as cut and dry as the, <laughs> you made it the, pre- the, pre- the previous situation. <laughs> Wheeljack, Brawn, Ironhide, Bumblebee, and Trailbreaker go with Spike and Skyfire to Cybertron. They dodge some missiles. That, that they say that them. they're going to outrun the missiles, but yeah. what they really do is dive through it because they don't have the budget to animate right. outrunning missiles. Right. For some reason, Cybertron is full of really basic old school booby traps. Yeah, right. God damn it. <laughs> you fucking dildo, Spike. You immediately fuck everything up by tripping over a laser tripwire. Yeah. But <laughs> the, the, the laser tripwire gets them where they need to go. They fall right. down the 
trap door. It's the opposite of a trap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, then we have the old trope of climbing. Through. I guess we do have to climb through the, the biggest ventilation shaft that's ever been. Yeah. Why do they need ventilation shafts on Cybertron? Ooh, toxic gases? I don't know. For don't know. who to avoid breathing? For whom and why? <laughs> Thank you for correcting me on that who whom situation. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll do it every time. <laughs> The I'm auto- pedantic. <laughs> the Autobots continue to infiltrate Cybertron. They they get all the way to the Decepticon lab and discover that the Decepticon's <laughs> ability to control humans is all about that hypno chip, baby. I w- speaking of which, I kind of wish Chip was in this episode. I miss Chip. It's weird he was in the first one and then they abandoned him. Was for the he? Next two. He was in part one. Oh, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> It was just last week. I, la, <laughs> not for me. In Showtime. <laughs> in Showtime, I guess it was two weeks ago. Oh, my God. This fucking wrench prop. Right. Yeah, yeah, wrench. yeah. Someone is coming, and the team, uh, and Frank's out of there. <laughs> they hide. Yeah. Oof. Great. Spike <laughs> leaves Spark Plug's wrench, Favorite on, wrench on the table here in the hopes that it will bring... Spark plug back to some level of lucidity. S- things seem hopeful at first. Because it's always worked so well every time he's tried to talk to his dad. You got to keep trying. It's your dad, man. You love him. I don't know. I feel like at this point I'd probably give up. Yeah? You'd yeah. Let, you'd let Floyd just be a slave I mean, forever? How often do we see each other? You how know, often do you see each other? Yeah. Like six times a year. Really? So you just give up those six special moments? Uh, yeah, Sure. I... <laughs> I After he told you he's n- you're not his son twice. Wait, what? Oh, don't call me dad. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was I got lost. I was still thinking about his favorite wrench. <laughs> Would it be a Poland Pro wrench? It would be a weed weed eater. <laughs> okay. Is weed eater a Poland Pro brand? Yeah, weed yeah. eater's a brand name. It is. I didn't know that Poland. It's called Pro a trimmer. Was. Yeah. In a generic it's generic term is trimmer. Well, God. I bought a new mower that is a Poland Pro. Your dad doesn't work for them anymore. Not not for years. (laughs) (laughs) But I think of him every time I see the logo. Uh, It's never far from my thoughts. (laughs) I can imagine. (laughs) (laughs) As we were all saying, things don't go well. Spark plug holds up his wrench. It seems for half a second. Looks like he smells it. Half a second. He's like... Spike sees his opening, he goes in, but instead of a beautiful reunion, the hypnochip lights up, and so does the alarm that spark plug goes and sets off. I hated Spike in this episode. Yeah? I did not like to care for him at all. First of all, he's weird and maudlin for half of it, (laughs) and then in the second half, it just fucks everything up constantly. None of that fucking goes anywhere. Not really. Except the talk with Optimus Prime. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. And that favorite wrench, that all is that's also supposed to be connected to the wrench he tripped over yes. in the last episode? Yes. Same wrench. And the one he chucked into Teletran 1. <laughs> so apparently he fished it out of there. <laughs> so is this wrench like the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? <laughs> it's a MacGuffin? It's not even, though, because it actually does something. <laughs> I feel like this is like viral marketing for wrenches. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? They never use the fucking wrench for its real purpose. You don't see them tighten the nut or anything in this. Who has a favorite wrench? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my dad that is That is the behavior of an unsound mind. <laughs> 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 to rank your wrenches. It's just a basic wrench. <laughs> sure, it it's adjustable. Have, it doesn't but have a comfortable grip on it or anything. I will say the drawing of the wrench when Spike puts it down on that table is very detailed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's oh, the boy. end of the episode, Talk guys. to your dad and ask him if he has a favorite wrench and report back to us, call, Caleb. Actually, call Colin and put him on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> ask him right now. It's only 1030. Sleep. Have him tell an off-color story about the railroads. <laughs> <laughs> Now I know what they mean when they say being railroaded. It's just about anything that happens just on the abused railroad. Just and talking shit about your friend's wife. There were no new voice actors to speak of in this episode, so maybe. Oh, that's we... the end of the episode, by the way. Yeah, oh, I said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we got it. I'm sorry, it, it's all covered, buddy. This show is set in the year of our Lord 1980. 
uh, is this 84 AD? I'd be curious to know what was going on in, in the real world. Oh, shit. November 10th, 1984. In the American Top 40, we had... Blah, blah, blah. For the second week in a row, it was Billy Ocean's Caribbean Queen. Oh, I will say, I, I don't know if I can find the clip for this week's American Top 40. I did some searches, and it's like one of the ones that may not be uploaded onto the web. But uh, I'll certainly drop it in if I can. Um, in case I can't... We heard it last time. It no, no, also no. could have been European Queen. That's true. Europe, That's true. European Queen. Well, I, in case I can't find it, I'll give you a couple of quick, like, little uh, facts about uh, Mr. Ocean. Uh, born Leslie Sebastian Charles on January 21st, 1950, he was the most popular Trinidad, Boston R&B singer-songwriter of the early to mid-80s. There's a lot of qualifiers in there. <laughs> uh, in an interview with ABC Radio Melbourne, he said that his name is inspired by a local football team in his hometown in Trinidad and Tobago called Ocean's Eleven, presumably after the Frank Sinatra movie presumably his 1988 number one hit get out of my dreams get into my car was featured in one of my favorite movies license to drive Ooh. i've and, never seen license to drive. oh it's it's I, it's it's wonderful i highly recommend really? it it's very enjoyable you were a fan of the Corys. yep r.i.p Corey haim he had a sad life he cory feldman didn't have a great one either yeah, I know, I, this. Uh, billy ocean has been a vegetarian <laughs> since 1992 and those are the end of my ocean facts. Great. Um, in number one of the movies was a, a, a real humdinger. Uh, oh God, you devil! Oh yeah, I remember watching those movies. Oh God, did you lose a bet? <laughs> Were they not good? Was John Denver in all of them? No. Oh, okay, so this is quite shocking. I'll, I'll, I think I covered that in, in what I've got here. Um, this was the third installment in a weird trilogy where George Burns plays God. All of them are unconnected, except for that in this installment, George Burns plays both God and the devil. The devil in this one is named Harry O. Toffet, and uh, Toffet is the Hebrew word for hell. It's basically a morality tale uh, what, about what's really important in life. A musician sells his soul to become famous, and then God and the devil have a poker game over it. And it's fucking so crazy. The only good thing about it is I've, I'm never upset to watch George Burns. He's always fun to watch. Um, the reason this was made is after the success of Oh God, Warner Brothers approached, approached other writers for sequels. They commissioned Josh Greenfield to write one and Andrew Bergman another. Bergman rewrote a play he had on the shelf about a songwriter who sells his soul to the devil. Not a good play, he said, but it was there sitting on my shelf. For me, it was just an attempt to salvage something I thought was a cute idea and was going nowhere. Also, I wanted to work with George Burns. <laughs> Speaking of Dirty Dancing, as we were earlier, <laughs> the 45 minutes ago, the movie Dirty Dancing Havana Nights has a similar story to what really? you just told the sequel to Dirty Dancing, although I don't it's think one of those sequels that isn't connected. No, like the characters don't go on. That was a movie, a totally separate uh, that written about the the revolution in Cuba and had very serious themes and was intended for a totally different thing tonally and what ended up happening is the people that owns the right to the screenplay took it and turned it into dirty dancing havana holy Nights. shit oh, oh wow <laughs> did that to it yeah Fuck. that's crazy hollywood man. that story is told better i think on an episode of radio By almost Lab. anyone who talks about it <laughs> i'm just kidding christ <laughs> That's okay. So for the, the round this uh, segment out on the cover of TV Guide was Michael Nader and Joan Collins from Dynasty, which uh, we mentioned is a nighttime soap like Dallas or Falcon Crest with rich people doing terrible things. And we did mention in a G.I. Joe episode where Pythona and Jinx fight in a fountain, uh, which Buzz Dixon says was inspired by a fight between Crystal Carrington, Linda Evans and Alex Carrington, uh, Alexis Carrington, and Joan Collins in a lily pond. We can... I'm the ghost of the iconic moment. <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to pick an iconic moment for this episode because I don't think anything happened in this episode. Not really. Like you could pretty much excise this episode and yeah. go straight to part three, and it's you the could. same story. Mm -hmm. Oh yep. God, yeah. <laughs> this is a waste of time. I will it's... say that I didn't have a specific one, but I did like seeing the just the paintings of Cybertron are nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they they were a lot better than in episode one. Yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, basically all that happened was that Sparkplug went to Cybertron and Spike went after him. Those are the only things that mattered. And you could have done that in one minute at the beginning of episode three. You could, yeah, you could have had it straight from this one where, like, his spark plug gets in Sky or Skywarp or Thundercracker and flies away. You could right. just have it that happen there. Right. Well, fuck you, writers. And just for the like the the scheme on this, I think as I said, they were going down. I give I, like this one is a seven out of ten. They didn't yeah. do much for me. Like right. they haven't really transported that much energy on. They don't really. They're surprised their base got fucked up. Mm-hmm. If you had an iconic moment, what would it be? Me? Yeah. Uh. I like seeing Skyfire again. <laughs> I like seeing uh, Starscream get choked out by <laughs> that. That is a yeah, good there one. You go. That is an iconic moment. I thought Ryan would say I liked seeing Spark Plug strapped down on that table. <laughs> Woo wee! <laughs> I, 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 I think Caleb's moment is the iconic moment. Sure, but. I do like in that same sequence, what I wrote down was that solid like Megatron gives him this backhand punch thing and it's just really loud Mm -hmm. and forceful. And I tried to force you guys to watch it and you didn't give a fuck. So anyway, it's time to get into our (laughs) yes. So this teleplay was by Earl Cress, July 16th, 1984. Story by Dick Robbins, Bryce Malick, Douglas Booth, and Earl Cress. Revised by Mr. Friedman, July 25th, 1984. There are only really two things worth mentioning about this in the deviations. After the jazz trailbreaker exchange about the hot nose thing, Sideswipe fires up his rocket backpack, lifts up off the ground for a moment, and then is swept backward and off screen by a huge gust of wind. There's a crash and a camera shake, and we pan over to find a long ditch, at the end of which is Sideswipe, stuck headfirst in the ground, his rocket pack still fizzling. Uh, when Hound uses that weird-ass metal detector thing to find Bumblebee in the crevice, uh, in the script it's supposed to be his radar turret, which makes way more sense, and I don't know why they changed it at all. Yeah. His Where is that located on his body? His shoulder. That's a radar turret? Or the thing that he uses whenever he, like at the dam to make that hologram, that little thing in, his be- in the truck bed. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Okay. Then due to Skyfire's status as a Bandoi toy in Japan, in Japan, the Japanese broadcast of the Ultimate Doom 3-parter was delayed until the end of the series where the legal matters were resolved, as were nearly all the Skyfire episodes. So all three episodes of the Ultimate Doom aired the same day as an extra-length series finale. Oh, wow. That, really? I think I remember that. I remember feeling like this series, this story was uh, end of season one and when we it came up so quickly as we were doing this thing that we are doing i felt like oh man that actually took place a lot sooner well and i remember but it aired it did air november 10th 84 i'm talking about in japan it didn't air until like 86 okay i wasn't in japan at the time Uh, so i guess (laughs) you uh, you weren't That's all my script deviation. But uh, but it is a legitimate thing. I always have felt like I thought this was the end of season one. Okay. I'm obviously wrong about that. Next time on the Autobot Decepticast. Final episode. The guys on Cybertron work to free the human slaves. The Autobots on Earth work to stop the Decepticons from transporting Energon to Cybertron, and Spike makes a final attempt to save his dad before the Earth is torn to pieces. It would, I mean, obviously we're not there yet, but it would have been awesome if this was the like Spark Plug is not in the show anymore and he's <laughs> just evil for the rest of his uh, life. That would be cool. Just hanging out with Doctor Arkville. It, but he's always getting tempted by his wrench to come back <laughs> to the other side. My favorite wrench. I love it. Store. Do you guys know we have one of those? Yes. Just uh, you know, Christmas is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think anybody else knows about it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> well, they know about it because they go to it, yeah, but just yeah. nobody actually let's pulls the trigger. Yeah. Let's tell the good people. Starscream, Pathetic Pools poster and APDC pin series number two, in addition to our original poster and APDC pin series number now one. Now at discount prices. Or if you'd rather benefact us on Patreon, you'll receive many of those very same items right. uh, in Early the upcoming booty box year, shipment. I think in March is when we're sending those out. We got to get on top of that. Let's not make any promises. Well, yeah, we just said the six months, and that's about in six months. Will be it out. is true. Yes, we will, we, we, we will be timely in sending it out. There is also, you know, the show. 
that we're, you're listening to right now that you can continue to listen to on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and tune in whatever your podcast platform Spotify. of choice is. And if you're an Apple Podcast reviewer or, as we've learned, a Stitcher reviewer, <laughs> you could – you can uh, review us. And we'll yes. talk. We'll, we'll and rate, rate us. That's right. Five stars, please. And if you do it, we will shout you the fuck out. We will. And, you know, Ryan says five stars, but we've gotten a four now. Yeah. I don't. And I'm, I'm crushed. And who knows if I'm going to survive the night. We're going to reconcile that in our hearts. Follow us on your social media platform of choice, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I would advise Twitter. And that's where we're the most active by far. All yes. of them at a pod decast. And, of course, is the web presence, autopoddecepticast.com. Com. Yeah, shit. Uh, oh, fuck, you guys. Whatever happened to our buddy Mike? Oh, oh damn. Um, I mean, no word oh. from Mike yet. I hope I hope he's okay. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what the fuck? Get out! Oh my God, Mike! Thank goodness. door slam. Thank goodness you're alive. You're here. You what just, happened? You just barged into our house, and now you're in our studio. This is cool. Well, no time to answer that now. We, uh, <laughs> we, we. Uh, funny story. We, uh, we ended up landing next to a rental car agency. Hmm. Springer Prize rental car. We'll grab your wrist. <laughs> that Springer guy is a square. He got mad at me at doing bong rips in the back seat with the plover posse. You kept the plovers? <laughs> sure. They're free. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I've had to deal with? Clearly, mm-hmm. good choices were not made today. Well, Mike, gosh, man. Welcome at last. I am really glad that you made it here for the holidays. You specifically <laughs> and only you. Well, I, as I, I'm just glad that I made it here alive. Hey, I'm glad I'm in here, too. <laughs> Where's the booze, Ryan? Hey, Ryan, can I sleep in your van for a while? Just season? Okay. I hate this fucking guy. <laughs> every time you go away. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm not oh, singing along with that. All the food in your fridge. Oh, my God. Wow, what a holiday miracle. It's a goddamn Christmas miracle. Okay, that's what the man has to say. Butthole. <laughs> poop, poo, butthole. Poop, poo. Pee, pee. Poop. Hole. Please donate five dollars if you think this man is inspirational. Poop hole. It's a hole a, a hole in poop, which has poop in it. It's in the egg. Poop butt hole poop 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 poop. Okay, okay, Kenny, what's on your mind? Poop. Only poop. Okay, only poop is on his mind. Poop 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 pee pee. No, is there a UK? Poop poop pee pee. Oh yeah, this is basically a dude. I mean, you're not wrong. Poop poop. Uh, would, would you like to say anything else to the viewers who are listening to this right now? Boo boo pee pee. Okay, that's Kenny Carter. Woo! Let's hear it for him. Let's hear it for Kenny Carter. Woo! Pill. <laughs> Brew Cells is the sponsor of Autopod Decepticast. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs>